teachers of Reddit what is the most depressing thing a student has told you about their home life. His parents would only give him a pillow and blankets for his bed if he had all A's. I contacted the school counselor and it was true, along with the fact that all of the food was locked away and he was only given specific amounts per day. Per DCFS this was not considered abuse. I made a deal with him that as long as he was doing his best, his grade would never drop below an A he teared up. My mom taught in a very low-income school and every year would go to the dollar store and pick up Christmas presents for all of her students. She knew that many of them didn't get any other gifts for the holiday. She also had stories about how they needed to be careful when constructing standardized tests because there were students who might answer a question like, what do you do when you're hungry, with go to bed, or similar things. Had one young man who had strange round markings on his arms I couldn't figure out. Looked little bit like vaccine scars. Figured maybe some scarification thing from his culture I didn't know about live in a melting pot country. We had a pretty good relationship, so I asked him. Nope. Cigarette burns from when he was a baby that had grown up with him. It was my first year teaching and the holidays were approaching. A second grade student asked my why Santa visits everyone else's home, but skips hers. On Christmas Eve, my father and I played Santa. We dropped off gifts at their home for each child with of course the permission of the legal guardian's parents were in jail. Got a message today about why a student could not come to class yesterday. Sorry I couldn't come to class, there were gunshots right outside my apartment and I thought I was going to die. The police did come eventually and I had to give a statement. I will get the work from yesterday done today. Thanks. Yeah you get that extension. Taught at an inner city charter school. Had a bright sixth grade girl who started sleeping during my classes, which was not like her. When I asked after school what was up, she told me that her family, her two younger sisters, and crackhead mom, moved into the homeless shelter and the last time she slept through the night, all their stuff got stolen. Five-year-old girl was crying at the lunch table. I tell her she's going to see her mom soon and it's okay. I don't know her very well at this point. She goes, my mom's in jail. So I quickly go, your dad, then. And she goes, he's in jail, too. Her twin sister says, we live with our grandma. I'm about to cry at this point so I ask if they need anything, can I get them anything? They ask for candy. I always carry caramels in my purse because these are safe candies and the kids love them and know I have them. I gave them each a handful of caramels and sat with them until their grandma came an hour later. We colored together. They each saved caramels for their grandma. I'll never forget those two little girls. I don't want to give out too many details but I've had to fill out four CPS reports in my four years of teaching. Three for students that either confided in me or were had signs that they were being physically abused and one that was sexual abuse from the child's father. It's honestly the worst part of the job, having to hear and see just the awfulness some kids have to go through. I gave a student a hard time for being absent for a week and she told me that she had to stay home to take care of her little brothers and sisters because her parents got extra jobs. And this kid was a very honest person. That was sad. Edit. I've had a number of people call me out as being an insensitive person on this. I should say two things. One, this was 20 years ago, and I feel bad about it, that's why I wrote about it. I learned from it and was hoping to share. Two, I shouldn't have said, gave her a hard time, because I think that gave people the impression that I was mean. I wasn't. I simply wasn't nearly as sensitive as I could have been, which I regret. This was a few years ago. This student came into class one day really late and escorted my some official. He threw his bag on the ground and sat in his seat frowning. Turns out, the day before he went home and his foster parents had decided they no longer want him so he went into the care of social services. Everything about this child went downhill from there. I was also in an interview with a mother and her son and she straight up tells us that she's not too concerned about her son as he's not her favorite child. The defeated look on her son's face still tears me up. Not a teacher but a student. I was absent a lot but always handed him an excuse note the next day. One day he came to me with all of them and told me that none of the signatures matched and therefore had to be forged somehow. I told him it was because sometimes my mom was really tired when I get her to sign it. 
In reality, sometimes she was too high to hold a pen and could barely scratch her name for me. Anyway, by the end of the school year it was very obvious to all my teachers that my mother had a drug problem. And when he took his proof to the office, they informed him that my mother had called in every one of my absences. He apologized the next day. A few weeks ago one of my online kids had a band-aid on her left temple so I asked what happened. She said, my mom was angry with me and threw a pencil and it stuck in my head, with blood. At the beginning of the year, I have my students write me letters about their life. This year, a student wrote about her dad committing suicide in July. Last year, I had a student's dad die from COVID. That was really sad. Sometimes, I think my kid has a sad home life but they're actually not sad about it. Like I had a homeless girl a few years ago that was always positive and joking. Or this year I had a kid tell me that he didn't mind going into foster care because the woman at his house makes bomb quesadillas. Not a teacher but I remember from high school I told a friend I was proud of him for his work outside of school. He teared up and thanked me because he hadn't been told someone was proud of him. I imagine that he couldn't remember another time. Also his dad was a real dick to him, so it's possible he'd never been told that before. That hit me right in the feels and I don't think I'll ever forget that. My mum is an English teacher and once told me about a child, 13M, whose mother had committed suicide a few years ago. In a creative writing task a few years after it happened the question revolves around finding out a secret. The boy then wrote a descriptive piece about finding a body hanging in his front room lifelessly swinging. Heartbreaking stuff crying face he had his counselors upped and said he just write it from the heart. Poor guy. An animation student of mine was pitching me her idea of someone dancing, and then running when police came to break it up. When I didn't understand why she started running, the student explained that women dancing in public in her country wasn't allowed. I'm in US, she was from a Middle Eastern country, school is online. I felt incredibly bad for her. I had a 10-year-old crying and wishing she was dead. Her older brothers at home were being awful to her, bullying and hitting her. She was saying I should just let her go so she could kill herself and then she wouldn't be a bother to us or her brothers anymore. Sat her down with the teacher, a cup of tea, some cookies and talked with her throughout the afternoon. Not much we could do about the brothers, but she left with a smile and came back at school the next day with a smile as well. Now I'm just keeping my eye on her in case things go bad again, but so far so good. Apparently talking to us encouraged her to tell her mother about everything that happened, so at least someone at home also kept an eye out for her. A female university student in China told me her mother tried to sell her for $8 as a baby. I haven't used a fork and a knife in ages. I worked at a group home for kids removed from their parents' care. The kid was completely raised by the TV and was 10 years old eating all his meals with his hands because he never ate with other people. Lots of sad stories. I was one of those students. School nurse saw markings on my back and asked what they were. I told her I got beat at home which I did for the smallest mistakes when not living with my dad who often went to rehab. Cop came and checked my whole body for more marks then social workers showed up while I was babysat by a nice old couple. Nothing ended up happening but I definitely got in trouble and received different types of punishment that didn't leave marks on me. I told a kid I was gonna call his parents because he was acting out in class. His response, if you find them, let me know where they're at. That he and his little brother were living alone because both their parents had been deported. A girl, about 17 yo, who had four younger siblings. Both of her parents had cancer and weren't able to work. She had a job and pretty much all of her free time went to her job and taking care of her family. She was tired all the time, missed assignment deadlines etc., but still she participated more actively during class than most other students. I taught in an area with high gang violence. My first grade student was telling me about his family and said, my daddy got shot. Another kid heard him from across the table and said, my daddy got shot too. These were two of the smartest first graders I've ever met, and it devastated me to think of their future as children of color in a gang-ridden impoverished city. When I was in sex ed class in seventh grade during Q&A time a girl asked a question, and through that it was discovered she was being sexually assaulted by her dad. 
He ended up going to jail over it, but you could tell that was a super awkward moment for the teacher considering the whole class found out at the same time. That he was kicked out of his house for being gay and that he was living with an older gay couple that had him do chores in his underwear. He cried and I didn't know what to do. This is in college though, so he was an adult, technically. Edit, this was back in 2013. One teenage girl once told me that she was sad and feeling ashamed because she wanted to sing in the shower and she couldn't. Muslim family with negative views about music. It stuck with me, so surreal to be deprived of such a simple and innocent pleasure. My students were debating on what hurt the worst when being beaten by their parent. The whole conversation was disturbing to say the least, but one kid, won when he mentioned the cord for the television. He even stood up and proved it by removing his shirt and showing the scars. Looked like Django. It went from students laughing to complete silence and then crying. Punishing a kid and then pulling up his profile to find out he is in foster care is not the best feeling in the world. A nine-year-old boy this week, as he's angry crying over Zoom. My dad always calls me a pussy. I'm not a pussy. We're still planning misogyny and messing up the emotional health of boys in 2020. Great. Not about home life, but I work at an early childhood school. We had a lockdown because a homeless person got into the building. We were all huddled in the bathroom and one of my four-year-olds asked if someone had a gun. Had a student one time whose birth mother who had to give her up due to addiction passed away during the middle of the school year. We were on the school bus passing by a graveyard on our way to the field trip. She said, look Ms. Mia, that's where my mom is buried. First grade. Right now I'm super struggling with a student who wants to do well, comes to advisory, gets a bunch done when he comes to class. But he doesn't attend most days, and when he does, his baby sister is on his lap. His mom has a baby last winter and she works two jobs. This student also has a near full-time job. It seems like he is the primary caretaker of a nine-month-old. I sent him an application for a year-long daycare scholarship, but I don't know if he can get mom to fill it out. I'm still studying and have just started a placement. This week one of the sweetest 13-year-olds in my class told me she was really tired because she couldn't sleep while her dad was yelling at her sister till 11 p.m. A four-year-old commented on my shoes. My dad has the same shoes but he's a drunk. Literally what to say to that. This post is making me emotional, as in angry. This is exactly why I want to be a foster parent one day. We were reading a poem in class, and like a lot of poetry it was triggering for a student. One of my struggling kiddos grew quiet through the lesson. After class, I asked if she was okay. She said, you can't handle what I have to say. I said, you'd be surprised at what I can handle, and left it at that. She stopped by on my conference, locked my classroom door, then removed her shirt to reveal enormous whelps across her stomach and back in various shades of black, purple, green, and yellow. Turns out that when her mother was sober enough to stand, the weapon of choice was a broom handle. I said, you know I have to tell someone, right? She didn't shed a single tear. She just nodded and said, I'm banking on it. During the second month of last school year one of my families became homeless and basically lived out of their car. While talking to my students about how everyone has a home, including bugs, as we were learning about bugs in our garden, she said, I don't have a home anymore. I live in my car and I sleep in the back. She said it so nonchalantly and I just felt like such a jerk. What's more, she was just a preschooler. Don't worry. You can be certain that I apologized to her for what I said and asked if she was okay. She said she was okay and went on to the playground. That no one loved them. Had a camper tell me her older brother would have sex with her often. She was only 7 and her brother was 16. The worst part was, she said it so casually. As if it were okay and normal. I teach at a university. A student told me after class that she was diagnosed with cancer. She said there was nothing to do because her parents told her that treatment would be too expensive. Twenty years later I still remember her name. I'm not a teacher but I overheard one of the students in my class talking to a teacher about something at home. This girl that was talking to a teacher was one of my friends, and this girl had a brother. 
I hadn't seen the brother for a while so I decide to listen and I hear something along the lines of her brother passing away after suffocating underneath snow, we had three days off of school for snow days earlier and I had never felt so bad for anyone in my life. I once had a student show up late every day for class in first period. I asked him after class that his tardiness is becoming his issue. He said he is doing the best he can, he has to help raise his younger siblings. He says his dad was an alcoholic and his mom lives in another state. He said he has to help his three younger siblings go to school and drop them off because his father is usually passed out drunk. There's a kid in my class who has told me that when he goes home he's straight on his Xbox all night till he goes to bed. He doesn't have any idea about what his family get up to while he's on it. He doesn't care. He gets his dinner brought to him. This kid is a normal child but he's one of the lowest attainers in the class because he does no reading or maths or even talking when he gets home. He also really struggles with his friendships in class. No he's not on the spectrum. All he does is Fortnite. He seems happy enough, but I find the closed-offness of his young world so depressing and I can't imagine it's going to help him later in life. It is not how I want to parent my children as they grow older. There are already 700 comments, so this will be buried, but I'd still like to answer. I had a student tell me he just wished his family could afford snacks. Any snacks. He'd even like carrots, but those were a dinner side. And lunch was so far away from dinner that he was never full. Another kid told me how scared he was that his family was going to lose their house. These were 7th graders, 11 or 12 years old. I wish they didn't have to worry about food or housing. There was a guy from my school who was doing well in his classes, and sociable. Sharp and funny. Then I ran into him last year and it was like he was a different person. I asked one of his friends what happened and they didn't even know. They just said he gets really anxious now. I just felt kind of bad for him after that. I wonder what happened. I tutored at a children's home. One of the girls had a severe intellectual disability, and at 14 was doing grade 1 work to fit in with the other kids. I was helping her learn her letters when she asked if I wanted to see her baby. I wasn't sure what she could be talking about so said sure, and she showed me a picture on her phone of a little boy of 4. She had had a baby at age 10. It was definitely hers, because she had a genetic eye defect, and the child had it too. All the children at the home had sad backstories, and we were discouraged from inquiring about how they ended up there, so I didn't inquire further, but that shook me to the core. Edited for disability sensitivity. Came back to school after Christmas, one of my girls, 10 years old, told me her mum got arrested on Xmas Eve after she got drunk and high and argued with a neighbour on the street and then pulled out a knife. Girl was then put in foster care for Xmas with no presents or family because it was so last minute. Very sad when she was hearing about everyone else's holidays. I don't have any childhood memory of my dad not beating me up, and I don't know why I can't just have the right to feel happy, he told me that yesterday. He's an adult so I'm still figuring or how I have to assess his situation make a memo to the cops? The hospital? The adulthood protection services? I'm gonna call him today to see how he's doing and try to convince him to leave his house or let someone pick him up.